right? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, Creator, come from your bright heavenly throne. Come take possession of our souls and make them all your own. You who were called the paraclete, blessed gift of God above, the living spring, the living fire, sweet unction and true love. You who are sevenfold in your grace, finger of God's right hand, his promise teaching little ones to speak and understand. O oh, guide our minds with your blessed light, with love our hearts inflamed, and with strength which never decays, confirm our mortal frame. For from us drive our deadly foe, true peace unto us bring, and through all perils lead us safe beneath your sacred wing. Through you, the Father, Father know, through you, the eternal Son, and you, the Spirit of them both, Christ blessed three in one. All glory to the Father be with his co-equal Son, the same to you, great Paraclete, while endless ages run. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you who instruct the hearts of your faithful with the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us to know and to live your will in the same spirit that he might always enjoy our consolation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I am nothing. God is everything. We love you, Father. Come, divine will, to think in my mind flow in my blood, look in my eyes, hear in my ears, speak in my voice, breathe in my breathing, beat in my heart, move in my movements, work in my hands, walk in my steps, suffer in my suffering. And since my soul is united to you, let me be the living crucifix. Immolated for the glory of the Father. Pray in me and then offer this prayer to yourself as mine, to satisfy for the prayers of all, and to give the Father the glory that we should all give him. Amen. All right. Um, hello and welcome everyone to this uh, Ave Maria Divine Will Cynical. We're glad to have you all here. Um, today is Saturday, October 23rd, and today we're here to talk about how to redo, repair, multiply, and substitute your acts in the divine will to give back to God all the honor and divine glory he deserves. Let's go ahead and take a little time to place ourselves in the presence of the Lord. And let us just come in front of the Heavenly Father on this day, using his most holy and divine will. To thank him for this day, to thank him for the lessons that he's giving us. And ask him, you know, to enlighten us, to receive these beautiful, beautiful celestial lessons. So that we can live our lives in the divine will, you know, next to Our Lady, the Mother of God, Mother of Jesus, the co-redeemer of mankind, and Luisa, the little daughter of the divine will. Amen. All right. So, well, we we wanted to talk about this subject because, um, well, it's probably one of the biggest subjects. Uh, concerning how to live in the divine will. How do you redo? How do you multiply? How do you repair in the divine will? This is the main subject of how to live in the divine will, right? How to substitute. And this is nothing new, really, if you think about that all of these chapters, I've ho I hope that you all had a, the opportunity to like read the document. They're all coming from volume 11 and volume 12, only three of the chapters. 
are really 28, 30, and 34. So this is this should be a review. I should be able to ask all of us, all of you, right? How do you redo the acts of the divine will? Right? How do you substitute your acts? So um, yes, so thinking about this, but before we get into that, it's a very deep subject. We want to do, um, where's this? Actually, from today's gospel, let's take a moment to, to uh, contemplate what our Lord is saying here on Luke 12, 1 through 9. We're going to skip down to the bottom of it, where our Lord starts talking about the parable. And it says, uh, and Jesus told them this parable. There was once a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, for three years now, I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, sir, the gardener, right? Leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. So think about this for a moment. You know, our Lord is giving, it, giving us, okay, so the words of the gospel, in order for us to produce fruit. And if we don't produce fruit, he's going to cut it down, right? So now think about how this applies to living in the divine will, to what we need to do in order to live in the divine will and bear fruit. Our Lord in the gospel is talking about human fruit. So you got to ask yourself, does our heavenly father, our creator, does he want human fruit? No. You know, human fruit would not satisfy him. Human fruit perishes after seven days. If you leave it on the table, right? It gets pretty bad. So our, our heavenly father, what he wants is divine fruits. He wants our divine fruit. He wants a divine fig in order to sustain him, right? To sustain himself. He wants a divine fig. What are those divine figs? Divine lives. That's what he wants. So we are here to learn the lessons to receive this fertilizer, divine fertilizer. You know, in the gospel, our Lord was, he was, he was uh, te teaching us, you know, how do you, how can you bear fruit, right? But now in the book of heaven, he wants to teach us how to bear divine fruit. Fruit that never ends, fruit that spans all eternity, has immense value, that is good food, good food for God. So that's what we need to contemplate. This is the gospel to the light of the divine will. Our Lord has given us this celestial, these supreme, these, these, uh, these lessons are so amazing, you know, on how to redo and how to repair and multiply and sub substitute the acts in the divine will. Our Lord has given us a year. If we don't produce this divine fruit in the year, he's going to cut us down, right? I mean, that's what the gospel is saying. Right, he's gonna. If you don't produce fruit, then he's gonna chop the tree down. So, uh, no fear, just uh, have a hundred percent trust in the Lord. Okay, so he's given us the, these lessons, these tools. These are this is how Luisa prayed in the divine will. So, if we take the next 12 months, the, these are the most sublime lessons of volume 11 and 12. So what we need to do is take the next 12 months to fertilize our ground with these tools every single day. That is the only way for us to learn to produce these divine fruits. You know, it's not enough to just have this knowledge intellectually. We have to bring it down to our hearts and actually, you know, do this work, the work of the living in the divine will. This is what Luisa did. This is the lessons that our Lord taught Luisa. This is how you, uh, you produce divine fruits. So it's wonderful to have this. But, you know, if we don't use it, if we don't make, if we don't apply it, then our Lord is going to say it's all waste, right? Luisa suffered 40 years every night to, for her to get us these lessons, these uh, lessons of gold, right? That are written on the celestial walls of the heavenly kingdom. 
So these, these are the words, these are divine words, right? So, um, okay, moving along. So let's start on redoing the suspended acts of Jesus and giving back to God all the honor and divine glory. From volume 12, January the 29th, 1919. We have the PDF, it's on the web and Ave Maria Divine Will and the latter and the latest uh, blog post. You can take it from there. And it says, it says, I was doing the adoration to the wounds of blessed Jesus. And at the end, I recited the creed intending to enter into the immensity of the divine will in which are all the acts of creatures past, present and future. And even those acts which the creature should do and because of negligence and wickedness, she has not done. And I was saying, my Jesus, my love, I enter into your volition and with this creed, I intend to redo, to repair all the acts of faith, which creatures have not done, all the disbeliefs and the adoration, which is due to God as creator. Here, Luisa, she's our model, our model of prayer. This is how you pray in the divine will, to redo and repair on behalf of all mankind, past, present, and future. And she's doing this with a creed, right? You can essentially do it every time you do the rosary, right? Every time we do, uh, every time we, we pray an Our Father or, or a Hail Mary or do any other prayer, you know, you can, you can have the intention to redo and repair. Notice how it says here, I intend to redo and repair. Now, this is how Luisa is, is praying because that's how our Lord prayed, right? So this is, this part, this first paragraph, is the summary of the rest of the, of the lesson. This should give us an idea. This is what's coming, All right? Then it says, go ahead. Um, now it seemed that he was saying to me, my beloved daughter, I want to make known to you the order of my providence. Every course of 2000 years, I have renewed the world. In the first 2000 years, I renewed it with the flood. In the second 2000 years, I renewed it with my coming upon earth in which I manifested my humanity from which as though from many fissures, my divinity shone forth and the good and the very saints of the following 2000 years have lived of the fruits of my humanity and in drops, they have enjoyed my divinity. Now we are all, now we are at the turn of the third 2000 years and there will be a third renewal. This is the reason for the general confusion. It is nothing other than the preparation for the third renewal. And if the second renewal I manifested with my humanity, I think that's supposed to be died and suffered and very little. No, it's actually did. Did, did I'm sorry, did and suffered and very little of what the divinity was operating. Now in this third renewal, after the earth has been purged and the current generation destroyed for the most part, I will be even more generous with creatures and I will accomplish the renewal by manifesting what my divinity did within my humanity, how my divine will acted with my human will, how everything remained linked within me, how I did and redid everything and even one thought of each creature was redone by me and sealed with my divine volition. Okay, so let us stop there for a second, right? Our Lord is saying, we're, we're not gonna concentrate so much on the history of the third, of the first, second, third renewal. You know, what we're gonna concentrate here is the, the part that our Lord is saying in this renewal, right? I will be more generous with creatures, that's us. And I will accomplish the renewal by manifesting what my divinity did within my humanity, right? That he accomplished already. He accomplished that already. He gave all that his divinity did in his humanity did in his divinity to Luisa Picarreta. 
this is done. This part is done, right? So he is being more generous with creatures, giving us the book of heaven. I'm just going to fill in the lines, right? And I already accomplished the renewal by manifesting what my divinity did within my humanity. You ask yourself, where is that? Let's go to the hours of the passion. In here, you will find what the divinity, what Jesus did in his humanity, in the divinity, how he accomplished all the acts, how he suffered all the deaths he had to suffer in order to save us, right? Look at the third hour of the Garden of Hetzemen, the reading. It's, it's all there. You know, he accomplished that. That's, that was a key hour, you know, in the last 24 hours of the Passion. Then you find as well, you know, when our Lord uh, raises up to, to the uh, Holy Trinity, when he's up on the cross, at that point in time, the, the prayer to disarm the divine justice. This is our Lord is doing everything that we should have all had done, you know, repairing and redoing everything on behalf of all mankind. Even to the point, notice here it says, how I did it, did and redid everything, and even one thought of each creature was redone by me and sealed with my divine volition. What does that mean? Your every single thought that you've had today, our Lord did it. Our Lord redid it. Our Lord gave God the Father all the honor and glory on that thought that you had. He's redone it for you. He's done it and redone it. This is the work of our Lord. And sealed it with my divine volition. Okay, so we don't know what sealed it. What does that mean? Right? The humanity of our Lord, the, the human will of the Lord, and the divine will sealed. They, they, in other places of the book of heaven, talks that kisses one the other, they become one. So all the acts, all the thoughts that you had today were already done by Jesus. Think about that for a second. How beautiful is that? He's done it all for us. And we'll see what he does with all this. But this is the key, right? Our Lord did all of our lives. He did, redid, repaired everything for everyone of all time. He was acting divinely, right? This is what we learned in the Hours of the Passion in the Book of Heaven. Our Lord was not acting humanely. He was acting divinely. He's a God. You know, he's acts. We're generating divine lives. They're generating all those divine lives that we talked about in the fig tree. He was generating all these things, right? Divine lives that would give all the love, all the adoration, all the praise, all the thanksgiving to our Heavenly Father. And those are the acts that He did for us, for you and for me. And He did and redid everything. Now let's continue see, seeing what it says right here. It says, my love wants it, its outpouring and wants to make known the excesses which my divinity here on earth operated in my humanity for the good of creatures, for the good of us, which surpasses by far the excesses that my humanity operated externally. This is also why I often speak to you about the living in my will, which I have not manifested to anyone until now. At the most, they have known the shadow of my will, the grace, the sweetness that doing it contains, but to penetrate inside of it, to penetrate inside the divine will, to embrace the immensity, right? It's immensity. To multiply oneself with me and penetrate everywhere, even while being on earth, both into heaven and into the heart's of men and women to lay down the human ways and act with the divine ways, this is not yet known. So much so that not to a few will appear strange and those who do not keep their minds open to the light of truth will not understand the thing, but I little by little will make my way manifesting now one truth, now another of this living in my will so that they will end up comprehending it. So our Lord is saying is, over time, we will come to fully understand this living in the divine will. So don't take it too hard that, you know, if you don't fully understand, that's okay. We're all in the same boat. We're all trying to learn this. That's, that's why we're going over this once and twice and three times. And so as many times as we need. 
But this is why it takes time. It, it'll take the whole year for us to fully, if you start meditating this every single day and start applying the lessons here, then we will really get to penetrate inside of it, right? How do you imagine there for a second, penetrate inside of the divine will, right? Is that something we currently do? Well, when you fuse yourself in the divine will, you're penetrating, you're entering into the divine will. You're not at the door anymore. You're not at the door of heaven. Now you are arriving to the throne of our, our, our divine majesty, right? Just read, if, if you read the preparation prayer of the hours of the passion here, once again, you'll find that at the end, it talks about how we're gonna fuse part by part, right? And we're gonna enter and we'll be in front of the throne of the divine majesty to do this, to do what? To do our prayers, to do what Luisa was doing to redo and repair the creed for all on behalf of all mankind. This is how our prayer should be similar to Luisa's. This is what we do in the divine will, penetrate into the divine will to be in, the, in front of our heavenly father, right? To embrace immensity. What is to embrace immensity? You know, to, and to penetrate and embrace immensity is to be in, in everything and in everyone at the same time. When you fuse in the divine will, you're penetrating into the all. You are penetrating. God is in all of us, right? Jesus is in all of us. You know, as we penetrate into the divine will, we're in all. That's why the rounds are in the creation in the redemption and in sanctification, you're penetrating into the all, into God himself, right? To multiply, we're gonna multiply ourselves with Jesus and penetrate everywhere. That means in all the kingdoms, right? The celestial kingdom, so all, you're, you're gonna penetrate into all the saints in heaven, into all the angels, into all the, in the, the kingdom of the animals, the kingdom of the creatures, right? So it's in all creatures, past, present, and future, in all the animals, in all the plants, in all the minerals, the kingdom of the plants, the kingdom of the minerals, right? The kingdom of, of uh, all creation, into the whole universe, in the stars, in the sun, in the moon, in everything. When you feel, this is that, what, what we have to realize. We fuse in the divine will, we're expanding into the all. Right? It's not just our little mindset here. It's not just between you and Jesus. No, now it's expanded to the whole creation. That's big. That is big. That's what we need to kind of like understand. You know, and this is what, the, the more we read this, the more we pray over this, we will understand what, what it is to penetrate and how we, we lay down the human ways and act with the divine ways. Imagine leaving our human way of praying behind so we can pick up the divine way of praying. We can pick it up. That's how Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed in a divine way. What does that mean, right? Well, your prayer in the divine manner, it affects all time. It's not subject to our time right now. Most people say, oh, it's, it's 1.30. I only pray between 1.30 and 1.45 and then I'm done, right? No, no, no. This is beyond time. We're talking about all centuries from the beginning of creation until the end of time. That's how we pray in the divine will, right? You know, we pray on behalf of all creatures, past, present, all generations, all your children and your children's children and, and all those that, uh, all those generations, right? And their parents and their grandfather, right? all those, all the souls are from Adam up until the end of of time it's really encompassing everything that's how jesus prayed when you fuse in the divine will that's how you pray too you just have to, to come to realize it. it's just knowing the realization is that we're entering into heaven and into all the hearts that's how we pray in the divine will right to lay down the human ways this is not yet known and to some people it will appear strange you know if you're right now, the first link, it says, the first link which connected the true living in my will was my humanity, the humanity of Jesus. My humanity identified with my divinity, swam in the eternal will, the eternal volition, 
and kept tracing all the acts of creatures in order to make them its own. Our Lord kept tracing all the acts of creatures, kept tracing our acts in order to make them its own. Okay, so think, let's think of what does that mean, tracing, right? So it leads me back to when we were in, in middle, well, when my mother was in middle school and you would be tracing the words and you get this beautiful calligraphy, right? It would be perfect. And you look at our, uh, on my mom's generation and they, we, you guys, ladies have the most beautiful writing there is because you guys did a lot of trace. Our Lord is saying, well, you know, we have to keep tracing in the same way the acts of creatures. How do you do that? How do you trace in the divine way? Right? Well, come Jesus, come and talk in me. Come Jesus, come and look at me. Come Jesus, come and walk in me. That's tracing. Right? That's how you trace. It's uniting yourself with Jesus. Yep, but we're doing with him. We're tracing. We're learning to do the acts in the divine. This is, this is the, the practical part. It has to be something that you do every single day from the beginning of your day with the prevailing that throughout the whole day with the actual act. Tracing, tracing, tracing. Think about your calligraphy class. You'd have to do it until you got really good, right? Same thing with the fusing part. We have to do it all the time. We have one full year to get good at tracing, right? And uh, all the acts of creatures in order to make them his own, his own or its own. It's actually talking about the divine will, right? Taking all the acts, the human acts into the divine will acts, converting everything that's human, everything that, that, that connection between the human will and the divine will that got broken with Adam, you know, when he sinned at the fall, right? So he's connected, he connected all the human will to the divine will. Why? Because he wanted to give the father a divine glory right on the part of creatures to give all he did our lord was giving back to the father divine glory on the part of creatures what is the uh, title of the subject of this talk is to give back to god the divine glory on the part of creatures on the part of us this is our work our work is to give back to god all the divine glory not my human glory not the human glory i can give him i can praise him all day you know, but that's only going to occupy me from 3 to 4 p.m. But if you praise God in the divine will, if you adore him in the divine will, if you go to adoration, if you go to communion, if you receive him, right? If you do it in the divine will, now these acts are going to span all, all time. There's going to be all generations. They're going to be immense. They're going to be infinite. They're going to, have, they're going to contain divine lives. You're going to ask yourself, am I going to do all that? No, you're not going to do anything. Jesus is going to do it all for you because he's already done it for you, right? He's just given us the merit, you know, that we're tracing his acts. We're just tracing, tracing along, right? He's making it real easy for us. He says, to bring to all the acts of creatures the value, because now they are divine. They're not human anymore. The value, the love, talking about divine love, not human love. The kiss, we talked about what's the kiss of the eternal volition, right? You have the human will, you have the divine will, they're both kissing. The act of kissing is the union of those two wills. The union of our human will with the divine will. Once you fuse, once you're, you're doing your human acts, you can do your cooking, you can do your cleaning, you can wash your car, anything. It's a human act, but if you call the divine will, come Jesus and come, come and wash the car with me. You're inviting him, like invoking the Holy Spirit, right? But in this case, you're invoking the divine will that's going to do, it's going to convert this human act into an immense divine act that has all the value, right? And it says, in this fear of the eternal volition, I could see all the acts of creatures that could possibly done and were not done. Everything that should have been done. Everything that all the generations from Adam before the fall, they should have been done, right? That we haven't done because, you know, we're talking here eternal acts and divine acts. We're not talking about the daily today activity. We're talking divine because we were, they were not done because why? Because we lost the divine will. Right? 
and the very good acts done badly. Well, we're not going to get into details on this one because we don't have that much time, right? <laughs> so this you can work out, you know, throughout the whole year. Okay, what good acts have really done been bad? Been, been done badly? It's easy, right? It's just uh, oh, turn the TV on. This is this is volume twelve. This is the same month, January twenty ninth, nineteen nineteen. So it's like we're not we're not looking at like volume thirty five here. This is volume twelve. This is our Lord was preparing her back in when, right, right. So it says, and this this is a good part coming. So pay attention here. Possibly all the acts that possibly be done and were not done, and the very good acts done badly. And I did those which were not done, and redid those done badly. So our Lord redid everything to make it perfect. He did everything in perfection, right? Then it says, now these acts not done and done only by me are all suspended in my will. They're suspended. Right? What does that mean? Okay, well, let's keep going. It says, and I await the creatures to come to live in my will and repeat in my will that which I did. That's the ticket. Our Lord has done everything. He did and redid all the acts to perfection. And they're all suspended. They're all waiting. Waiting for us to go into the divine will and take them. When you call Come, Jesus, come and walk in my feet. You're starting to trace. And little by little, your, your prayer will change to be like this. Like Lisa was doing the creed, right? So we got to take those baby steps. We got to start walking in this divine will. Number one, step number one, walk in the divine will, right? Call Jesus and everything you do, start tracing all the acts. So that you get to a point. You have to say, okay, Lord, now I want to take that next step. How do I pray in the divine will? This is what we're talking about. How do we redo the acts like Jesus did? Right? So this is the homework for the next year. I'm not going to give it away, right? These are the perils that you, you have to go sell the house now, you know, to get into this, right? But this is something that through prayer, through reading this chapter over and over, asking the Holy Spirit, calling the divine will, it would all be revealed to us little children. Okay? But basically, the acts are suspended. Right? You can think, I'll, I'll give you something, some food for thought here. You know, when our Lord, uh, talking to Luisa, said, I want you to do the acts of redemption. And Luisa was like, how do I do that? I don't know how to do it. He says, well... Go into the primac, go into fuse in the divine will and go into this when I was a baby, right? And take the first steps as a baby. So you fuse in the divine will, you enter into the primac, then el acto único de Dios. I'm not 100% sure how you say that in English yet. The acto único, the primac, right? So you enter into that, you take those first steps of our Lord and you unite them to all the steps of all mankind. You take them. They're yours. There's are yours for you to take. So you take them, and then you offer them to the Father. That's that's entering. That's tracing our Lord's acts and offer them to the Father on behalf of all mankind for all the missteps that we've have all done. That's how. That's one example how you do it. We'll take all the life of Jesus. This is the good part where you, you can start every gospel you hear. You can, got to take every gospel and translate it and. How I'm going to redo with Jesus everything he did. So what are the last steps of our Lord? Carrying the cross. Right? He was carrying the cross on the way to Calvary. So you take all those steps of Jesus. Unite them to your own. Unite them to all the steps of all the saints. Right? Of all mankind, past, present, and future. And you offer them to God the Father. It's beautiful. It's easy. And in that act, you know, this is like a first step of, of praying in the divine will. In that act, you're going to be giving such adoration and glory to God that our Lord, our Heavenly Father is going to start saying like, I'm hearing some prayer from somebody. Let's see who that is. And this, these acts, 
Yeah. These acts will be the little letters of love you're going to be sending the Heavenly Father. And the more letters you send over, the more he's going to start like hearing your voice. And, and all of a sudden, it's, what is this? And all the saints in heaven, all the angels are going to go like, whoa, who, who's praying over there? Is, is that Ruth? Or, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> right? So, you know, you start, you, he starts receiving from creatures all the divine glory, all the divine adoration, the divine love these eternal infinite acts that all of a sudden is you're redoing, you know, everything that creature should have done. You're giving back to God all the honor and glory he should have received. And that's just beautiful. Right? That's just immense. That's why there's a whole year to do this. The whole year to get good at this. Because it takes practice. It takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of abandonment, a lot of love. And as you do this, then our Heavenly Father is going to start sending, you know, all this grace to every single one of your acts. And all this grace is going to come down on the saints and on the souls in purgatory and on our children and our parents and all the condemned souls and all the people that are dying and all the aborted babies. Right? And they're all going to get everything. All this grace are going to come down. Well, that's all wonderful, but it's all suspended. There are suspended, and you have to take them. That is your homework. That is your job. That's what the souls in the divine will do. Living in the divine will is not coming to, to Seneca on Wednesdays, reading for two hours, going home, and, and pretending nothing happened. No, it's the homework. This is the real life. This is the real, um, the real work. This is what this is so important. Then our Lord tells us, look in your hand, uh, John. Where are we? Yeah, right here. This is why. This is why I chose you as the second link of connection with my humanity, forming one single link with mine, living in my volition, repeating my very acts. Otherwise, on this side, my love would remain without outpouring, without glory on the part of creatures for what my divinity operated in my humanity and without the perfect purpose of creation, which must be enclosed and perfected in my will. It would be as if I had shed all my blood, suffered so much, and no, would, no one would have known it. Who would have loved me? Which heart would be shaken? No one. And therefore, in no one would I have had my fruits, the glory of my redemption. And I, interrupting the speaking of Jesus, said, my love, if there is so much good about this living in the divine will, why have you not manifested it before? And he, my daughter, first I had to make known what my humanity did and suffered on the outside to be able to dispose souls to knowing what my divinity did on the inside. The creature is incapable of comprehending my work altogether. Therefore, I kept manifesting myself little by little. Then from your link of connection with me, the other links of creatures will be connected and I will have crowds of souls who living in my volition will redo all the acts of creatures and I will have the glory of many suspended acts done only by me. Yeah, so, so here's the invitation, right? From your link, from Luisa's link of connection with Jesus, the other links of creatures will be connected. And I will have crowds of souls who are living in my will, will redo all the acts of creatures. And I will have the glory of many suspended acts done only by me, also from creatures. I guess they should have been underlined as well. Very important. But our Lord is saying that he's waiting for all of us to come live in his will so we can also redo those suspended acts and give back to God the Father all the honor and glory that we should have all, all have given him. So it, it's the invitation. This is it. This is yeah, and link to Luis. Luisa is the first one to do these acts in the divine will that she's born in original sin. You know, now we are linked to her in this way. 
so that we can give God the Father the glory among so many suspended acts done only by Jesus. These are the divine figs that we we're talking about earlier. The divine fruit. This is what our Heavenly Father wants. All these divine acts redone to receive what? All the glory he deserves. You know, because from Adam, he didn't have any glory after that. Until a lady came and until a Lord came. Came and now with Luisa, he's receiving all the glory on, on behalf of the fallen human nature with their human will united to the divine will. So these are the suspended acts. They're waiting. They're waiting for us to come and redo them and offer them to the Father and God the Father. Again, it's very simple, very easy to do, right? You know, start with the life of Jesus, everything he did, you know. He was uh, taking uh, milk from his mama. He was uh, playing with his little hands and feet. You know, there's some of that in the hours of the Passion, right? Then he was, everything he did, he was, he was having all his natural acts, right? You know, taking the food, you know, taking his first steps, playing around, you know, all the hugs and caresses with St. Joseph, right? He can take all those and offer it to God the Father for all the love that, you know, we don't give him. So it's all, everything is suspended. Think about it. It's everything. All the daily life that Jesus was doing. He was redoing everything in the divine will. Everything that, you know, it's almost like every heartbeat. Everything. The whole of your day. Go back to the beginning of the chapter when it says like, he was doing all the thoughts of creatures. He was redoing them. All of our thoughts. Even the thoughts. The, what goes up internally in us our intentions, our desires, our affections. He was redoing everything. Now it's our turn. This is our work to go do our homework, to take all those, to offer them on behalf of all mankind to God the Father. Right? And this is, you know, and these from all classes, virgins, priests, lay people, here we are. Right? Our Lord will receive all those suspended acts redone in the divine will by us you know with his help of course you know by all kinds of people the lay people according to our office they will they will no longer operate humanely or humanly right but penetrating into my will their acts will multiply here we go now multiply for all in a way fully divine what does that mean penetrating into my will is fusing in the divine will right we know that. Fusing the divine will is, you know, arriving to the seat of the Holy Trinity, to the divine majesty. And with our acts, with our acts, multiply them for all on behalf of all mankind, past, present, and future. Right? Past, present, and future, multiplying for all in a way fully divine. This, our Lord has opened the gates of divine acts. And all those divine acts are suspended and they are there for us to take. How are we going to take them, right? I will have on the part of creatures the divine glory of, notice this, many sacraments received and that ministered in a human way. Many sacraments, some of them, or the many Eucharists, mm -hmm of the many acts of confession received by us and administered by his priest in a human way. Others profane, all the, all the uh, Eucharist that are profane, others sullied with human interest, right? And of many good works in which I remain more dishonored than honored. Now our Lord is, you know, what is the biggest act that humankind could do up until uh, let's just give it a date, like the Vatican II. What was the biggest act anybody could do? When the priest elevates the body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ to give back, to give to God the Father all the honor and glory. That's what we're doing in the Holy Mass, right? And in those days, you go, go look at the pictures. Of, and even today's in today's Latin Mass, right? You see this priest elevating our Lord you know, almost touching the ceiling, right? And it's so beautiful. You're giving the true, the true divine honor and glory 
for the sacraments, for the masses, for all the many good works in which our Lord is dishonored, more dishonored than honored. So get, think about how the priests that live in the divine will in this beautiful act can now give in the divine will all the honor to our heavenly father. Now think all of us, you know, that if, if our Lord said, so like, think about, you know, it's things that you can, you can start comprehending, right? You know, in the old service, in the Old Testament, we offered, uh, what was it, pigeons and bullocks, right? And we killed them, right? And then our Lord came and he replaced that sacrifice for his own. You know, now it's our Lord is given the sacrifice, you know, of the mass, given his body, blood, you know, for us, for our sins, right? So, so we had this act that was the Eucharist that, is the greatest act that human being can give, right? It still is, you know, don't tell me wrong, it still is. But now with the divine will, we can also offer all the rest. So it's not anymore about the, the holy soul and body of, of blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, but it's everything he did. We're actually offering the acts of Jesus. Now is the acts of Jesus. We're not only taking his soul and divinity, we're offering everything he did every single step he took, every time he ate, every thought he had, you know, the movement of his hands, of his feet, everything he did, you know, that is satisfying God the Father more than anything else that we can ever do because those were divine acts done by God himself. But we're giving back to God what belongs to God. It's not human anymore. Not human. That's why he says, you know, so many good works done in a human way. You could say that. Yeah? So many good works done in the in the human will. But now we're giving back to God things in a divine manner, what our Lord did. Right? So maybe that'll be the mass of the future, giving offering all the acts that our Lord did throughout all his life. So the more we know about Jesus' life throughout time, right? The more we can give. And, and there's a beautiful book. I, don't, I've, I haven't seen it in, um, in English or maybe a, a, the poem of the man God, right? You know, in this book, you know, you know, our Lord describes everything he did. Yeah, for the, for the, for during his public life and even, even before, right? You know, when, when he was little and stuff. It's beautiful. So once, once you learn to do this in the divine will, now our Lord has given those tools to us. This is how he was living life. Now you can go take those and offer those acts in the divine will to God the Father. So the whole, the whole goal, if you could take the whole life of Jesus, everything, and give it back to the Father, you're complete. Your work is done. Well, now you got to do the acts of creation, you know, when, when God the Father was creating the earth and the moon and the stars. And then you'd also have to do the acts of sanctification as well, which are the ones that are coming down the road. Right? So... There's a lot of work to do, right? It's infinite amount of work, so don't worry. And, and Felipe, um, yeah. the more that we, the more that we do this, that the Lord wants, that He's teaching us in this. Yes, we are giving the Father glory, like what you were just talking about, which we were just reading. But is it also that, of course, what is happening is that all souls from all time then are receiving a disposition more themselves to be able to accept all that the lord had done for them in other words in other words we, we we are taking part in everything that jesus did also to dispose them to also embrace everything yeah. that god did for them yes Absolutely. yes everything all these divine acts they have divine lives what is the divine life is the life of jesus is another mm -hmm. jesus right so all these divine lives we have yet to learn but the divine acts, how they affect the whole of creation, how they affect the whole of the of everything, mm -hmm. of each, the the lives of the saints and everything. That's those are the uh, effects of this prayer, right? Mm -hmm. We're not at the at the effects yet, so I don't want to get too far ahead into that. But okay, basically, that would be that would be the uh, the end of it all. Absolutely, that's wonderful. There's a great difference between prayer before. And now the prayers we're doing now. Right, right, right. It's so like it's like part of um, what God is doing. We're, we're doing it because 
yeah so it's an excellent excellent point so the the question is well you know we're doing more now than we were doing before because before yes before you know you could be praying in the human it's even still now right we pray in the human will and that's like um the human will is like the fruit that we're talking about it's only good for seven days right it's only good for seven days even the miracles our lord says even the miracles even if you if you make a paraplegic walk right it's good for the lifetime of the paraplegic but then he dies the good is over right they have, those those are fruits that last seven days they're finite. but they're finite mm -hmm. absolutely they're not eternal they're not immense they they are not um a divine act you know praying in the divine will you know you might not see anything right but it's really creating a, a divine a divine life a divine act that's gonna last all eternity and those are the fruits that last those are the fruits that god the father wants those are the that's the the true divine fig right that's what we want so that's the goal of it but let's not get ahead you know um because we do have a lot to uh to read and it's like uh, time is standing still here anyway so um okay so right now if you look at the document we're in the in the redo part there's we still have to go through repair and multiply but yes we are starting to see multiply here i didn't highlight it too far but when it talks about multiply for example one effect of multiply is you're doing it on behalf of all mankind right you know you're doing everything on behalf of all you're not doing them for yourself this is the the problem with the prayer and the human will you're doing it for yourself and your friend or your children or whoever is on the other end of the receiving well you could if you're doing it in the human will it's only a human but you can also say the rosary in the divine will luisa was doing the creed in the divine will yes 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 that's the difference you know so initially you have to go back to that to where he talks about tracing it's all about tracing calling the divine will invoking the divine will in your little acts you know then jesus does the rest he's the one that takes care of converting them from you know little acts to this divine infinite eternal immense all-encompassing acts but it, it it doesn't happen overnight you know for luisa look how long it, it had it, it, she was in, we're talking 1920 she was uh, 56 years old or something like that. so it, it took her a while to get here exactly all right so moving along because they, we haven't even finished our first chapter here right so everything all the acts are suspended right multiply the sacraments link of the connection with mine with luisa so this is definitely something that uh, we have to work on for the next year to give this divine fig divine fruits that we're talking about earlier okay maybe you can leave some of the questions for the end uh, th this is something definitely that th we could have many sessions of this and then many practical sessions that we could pray and all this this is just uh, it's, it's we're presenting the work that now we all have to go do right so if we can at least read some, we can finish in some other session. But so this is from volume 11. Again, it's not a huge, huge, uh, and one of the high volumes is volume 11, May the 3rd, 1916. It says, pray as Jesus prays, right? And it starts like this. Jesus told me, I skipped half of the, half of the, uh, of the chapter here, just to go into what Jesus told me. Jesus told me, my daughter, pray, but pray as I pray. That is, pour all of yourself into my will, and in it you will find God and all creatures. And making all things of creatures your own, you will give them to God as if all were one single creature. Because the divine volition is the owner of all, right? Then you will place at the feet of the divinity the good acts in order to give honor to it, and the bad ones in order to repair. Now we're starting to see the word repair, right? For them through the sanctity, power, and immensity of the divine will, from which nothing can escape. This was the life of my humanity upon earth. So our Lord is our model, right? We all, 
We all have to be Jesus as here on earth in order to fulfill his will, right? So he's saying, you know, take all the, the, all the good acts to give honor to God the Father and to the divine will, and the bad ones to repair, right? Through the immensity of the divine will, nothing can escape. This was the life of my humanity upon earth. As holy as it was, I still needed this divine will in order to give complete satisfaction to the Father and to redeem the human generations. In fact, only in this divine will could I find all generations, past, present, and future, in all of their acts, thoughts, words, etc., as though in act. And in this holy will, letting nothing escape me, I took all thoughts into my mind, and for each of them in particular, I brought myself before the Supreme Majesty and I repaired for them. This is what our Lord did. He repaired all the human acts of creatures, all the thoughts, everything. Everything was repaired by our Lord, everything. That's what he did for us. That's how he united the human will back to the divine will. That's, that's how he saved us and redeemed us. In this same will, I descended into each mind of creature, giving them the good which I had impetrated for their intelligences. So first, first, he repaired the intelligence, right? Then he repaired the gazes, right? In my gazes, I took the eyes of all creatures, their words in my voice, their movements in my movements, their work in my hands. He was tracing. Notice he's tracing all the acts that we can do, right? Their affections. Okay, well, the affections are something traceable. And the desires in my heart, their feet and my steps. This is where we can go take the feet, the steps of baby Jesus and offer them united to all of mankind, to God the Father, right? My steps, making them my own in this divine will, my humanity, satisfy the Father and I placed the poor creatures in safety. And the divine father was satisfied, nor could he reject me, he himself being the holy will. Would he perhaps reject himself? Certainly not. More so since in these acts, he found perfect sanctity, unreachable and enrapturing beauty, highest love, immense and eternal acts, invincible power. So this is what we are to do with his holy and divine will, as we have to take it. I want to take his sanctity. I want to take his beauty, his highest love, his immense eternal acts, invisible. I want to take it all, make him my own, so I can offer it to God the Father on behalf of all mankind. That's multiplying. On behalf of all mankind, it's multiplying. Not just for yourself, but for everyone. Right? So we're just taking, we're just redoing what, he's, what he did in that sense. This was the whole life of my humanity upon earth. From the first instant of my conception to my last breath, to continue it in heaven in the most holy sacrament. Right? This was the life of my humanity upon the earth. This is what our Lord was doing all along that we didn't know. We didn't really know too much of him, right? But now we know everything he was doing. So now we, we go to the point of man, God, now we can take piece by piece and offer it in the divine will. Now, why can you not do this as well? Really, guys, why can't you not do this as well? It's easy. We can all do it, Mary. We can all do it. Why can you not do this as well? For well, one who loves me, everything is possible. You see, that's the key here. It's all love. If you don't have the love, the divine will is, God is love. God is all love. We have to take it down from the brain down to the heart. That's what it means. So it's, it's not enough to just do all these prostrations, right? It has to come from your heart. United with me in my will. Take and bring the thoughts of all before the divine majesty. Here's the homework. It's underlined for you. For the next year, we should all united with Jesus, fused in with Jesus, they can bring the thoughts of all before the divine majesty within your thoughts. You're uniting the thoughts of Jesus and all humanity and bring him to the divine majesty. Because all those thoughts are now perfect. They're divine. You're taking the, the thoughts of Jesus. Now they're perfect acts. So 
the gazes of all in your eyes, in your words, movements, affections, and desires. Those of your brothers, in order to repair for them and then penetrate for them light, graces, and love. Here it is. This is, you're starting to see the first effects of what's going to result of these divine acts. You're going to impetrate for our brothers light, grace, and love. These are, we're starting to see, this is, it's actually going to shower graces upon all humanity. It's going to pour down from heaven. And here we are thinking that, right? We can do it on our own or something. No, we can't. We got to do it on the divine. Because there'll be, these are the, the, the light, the grace and love that Jesus impetrated for all of us, right? So we're just repeating what he did. My will, you'll find yourself in me and in all. We're saying already, all the saints, all the angels, all the creation, everything. You will live my life. You will pray with me. That's living in the divine will. It's another Jesus here on earth, right? In everything, in all the little things, in all the natural acts, the divine father will be happy and the whole of heaven will say, who is calling us from earth? Who is that wants to compress his holy will within herself, enclosing all of us together? And how much good can the earth obtain by making heaven descend upon earth? Heaven descend upon earth. When you fuse in the divine will, all the angels, all the saints in heaven start coming down. All the saints in heaven and all the angels will come down to, to earth. You will, you're calling them. They're actually all you know, competing with each other to see who's going to get to have their acts redone. Because we can redo the acts of, we can do this. We can offer the acts of saints united to the acts of Jesus for the accidental glory of the saint and for the kingdom coming. We, we'll see that. That's also in later on. This is, this is more like prayer, uh, I don't know, 201, right? 101 is tra tracing the acts, offering to God all the acts. Now, pr now prayer 201 is, is, this we'll see something later. That's in a, in a higher volume. Multiply and repair as if another Jesus was doing. Okay, so we've gone from redoing now to multiply and repair, right? From volume 12. It says, so is, uh, May 3rd, what were we doing? On May 3rd, we were still redoing and, well, redoing, repairing. There's still suspended acts to give the honor and repair. Pray as Jesus prays. This is May 3rd was pray as Jesus prays. We have to become like Jesus in order to give honor and to repair. And as we do this, we bring ourselves in front of the Supreme Majesty. That's the difference. I mean, you're going to be in front of the Holy Trinity, guys. You know, you got to be dressed for the occasion. Dress like Jesus. You got to dress like Jesus. You got to put the thorns. You got to put the. Uh... They look at us. Yeah, so we, we got to, yeah, dress for the occasion. Perfect sanctity. Yeah. Okay. So that this is repair, right? Now we're going to go into multiply. Multiply volume 12. We're not on the higher volume still. This, I remember that in the will of Jesus, come divine will, come and reign in us, right? I could see all the thoughts of Jesus and the good he had done to us with his intelligence and how all human intelligences receive life from his mind. But oh, God, what an abuse they made. How many offenses? And I said, Jesus, I multiply my thoughts in your will to give to each one of your thoughts a kiss of a divine thought. This is a kiss. A kiss is the unity, the union between the human will and the divine will. A kiss of a divine thought, an adoration, a recognition of you, a reparation. Now we're going into reparation as well. A love of divine thoughts as if another Jesus were doing it. And this in the name of all and for all the human thoughts, past, present, and future. I intend to compensate even for the intelligences of lost souls. So you can do that too. You know, you can offer to God the Father, you know, everything that the lost souls will not do. That includes all the masses, all the praise, all the adoration, all the glory, all the sacraments, everything that they don't do, we will do for them. 
we will do on their behalf, right? I want that the glory of all creatures be complete and that no one miss the roll call. And what they do not do, I do in your will to give you divine and complete glory. In the divine will, this is how Jesus, how Luisa was praying. This is what we need to do as well. This is our model of prayer. This is prayer 101. I multiply. I multiply. All right. So these are the things that we're going to give divine and complete glory to God the Father. That is the purpose of creation. To give God the Father all the honor and glory on behalf of creation. All right. Then it says, they're looking at me. Jesus was waiting as if he wanted a reparation to his eyes. And I said, Jesus, I multiply myself in your gazes so that I too may have as many gazes for as many times as you have gazed upon the creature with love. In your tears, you know, we can take the tears from Jesus from the time he was a baby, the time he died, so that I too may cry for all the sins of creatures to be able to give to you in the name of all gazes of divine love and divine tears to give you complete glory and reparation for all the gazes of creatures. So here we are also, this is how we pray. So we've done the thoughts, we've done the, ga the gazes. What else do you think is coming? The hearing, the talking, the loving goes down to the heart, the movements, the hands, the works, everything, everything. So these are, this document, by the way, is if you go to Ave Maria Divine Will in the blog, it's there. You can download it, you can print it, you can paste it on your wall and read it the whole next year. Then Jesus want, wanted me to continue the reparations to everything, reparations, to his mouth, to his heart, to his desires, multiplying everything in his will, such that it would be too long for me to say everything. Therefore, I move forward. Then Jesus added, my daughter, as you were doing these acts in my divine will, now look, this, uh, he's going to tell us about the effects of the acts done in the divine will. This is important. Huh? Many sons were formed between heaven and earth. That's what happens when you do the acts in the divine will. Many sons form. And what are those sons? Well, it's the, their divine acts, their divine, divine lives. That's what they're called. And I look at the earth through these sons, the heavenly father, Jesus looks at the earth through these sons. Otherwise the earth would be so disgusting to me that I would not be able to look at it. Disgusting, the human will is disgusting to God. Why? Because it doesn't give him, give him anything back. It's like that fruit. Imagine God having to eat the rotten fruit. Rotten fruit. Right? No. He, don't, he wants the divine fruit. And I look at this earth through the suns, otherwise the earth would be so disgusting that he would destroy it. So this is what's keeping the divine justice from destroying the earth. We're kind of continuing yeah, and all these victim souls that are living today on earth, which might include us, right? Because giving up our will is, is a way of being a victim soul, right? We have taken the first step. We, we, we're going to give up his will. You know, if God decides to take us right now, what are, what are we going to say if he takes us right yeah. now? Fiat. That's it. We're, we're victim souls in that sense. So our Lord is looking at, at, at the earth through these sons. So you better have a few sons. And I mean S-U-N. That's why I'd rather say actually get more sons. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, the more sons you get, well, you know, you'll find out. Okay, so that was the part that's repair and multiply, right? So now we go into a substitute. This is where, this, whenever you see, you just look at the title, you, you know where we're going, right? It's easy. Uh, somebody's at the door. All right, so... Substitute, substituting the acts in the divine will. Substituting the human acts into divine acts. So this is volume 11, May 21st, 1913. A short, I, I took a part of the short chapter. It says, as I was in my usual state, my always lovable Jesus told me, my daughter, I want the true consummation in you, not imaginary, but true. Though in a simple and feasible way, Okay, so this is substitute 101. There's various levels of substitution, right? But this is how we, first, we had to start here. It says, suppose that a thought came to you which is not for me. 
You must destroy it and substitute it with the divine. This is to get to live in the divine will, you have to start here because this is going to replace all your sinly life into a life of grace. We cannot enter into the divine will unless we're living the humanity of Jesus. More so, the divinity of Jesus. We, how do we get there? Replacing, destroying your old self to substitute it with the divine self. So that's tough. Right? That's the hard part. How do you destroy your human nature? So the first thing that comes to my mind is, well, you got to mortify yourself, which is very hum human-like, right? The human will. You know, there's that part of the purification of your soul. And sometimes purification, you know, our Lord sends us all these uh, sufferings, all this pain, all this anguish, all these problems. Many people start in the divine will and say like, Oh, I, I got to get out of the divine world because I started living in the divine world and all of these bad things started happening to me. So our Lord is starting to re reorganize your life so you can live this life of, of divine, this divine life. You know, that's called purification. And, and some of us have more purification than others. You know, some of us are meant to live in the divine world. Right? So our Lord has taken care of it's like, what did he do with Luisa? He shielded her from everything. So some souls will be shielded. So they didn't have as much, but some people will have to go through the cross. You have to, you have to die in the cross in order to get to the other side. That's basically it. Maybe because how much you're attached to it. Yeah, it goes, it goes along with attachments. You know, it goes along with how much you're going to um, abandon yourself, you know, and how many attachments you have. You know, some people attached to their family, some people attached to their money, some people attached to their, to their work, some people attached to their sin. Yeah. So we have to get rid of all that. So how do you do it? This is substituting one-on-one. So uh, uh, let's say um, a bad thought comes over to your mouth. Mm -hmm. You got to recognize. First step is recognize it. Oh, geez, I have the bad thought again. What do I do? I replace it with a divine thought. That with everything, you know, we all have our weaknesses. We all have, we all want one thing or the other and this and that, and like, right, right? We, I don't have to go into it. You guys know what it is. Maybe a, a thought be like, I love, I Jesus, I love you, I glory, I praise him, I love you. No, no, it's a bad thought. You know, it's, you okay, so I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll give you what happened to me this week, just so it's, it's nice and, and, and real, right? So I kept thinking, I would wake up at three o'clock in the morning, thinking about my work. Like, oh, jeez. But again, it's 3 o'clock. It, so it's, I can look at it different ways. My Lord is, is calling me to go join him and do the arts and passion. Help the souls in purgatory. You know, or then it became so strong because I, I guess it's the stress of the new work that I'm doing and stuff, right? So it's, it's coming to me and it's saying like, okay, I got to get to the point of substitute. Lord, I'm going to destroy this thought. And I'm going to substitute it. Now take your pick. I'm going to love you more. I'm going to uh, take a soul out of purgatory. I'm going to do the hours of passion. I'm going to do any number of things. I can, I can substitute it with anything. That's the beauty of it. You substitute it with, any, with whatever you want. Oh, God. Okay, so uh, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Well, I can do the creed in the divine will. Can you do an apology? Yeah, you can do okay. anything you want. Because so, that's yeah. quick and yeah. Yeah, okay. but you know, it's what you what you want to substitute it to, because we're learning to do all these acts in the divine will. We'll substitute it with something related to this, you know. So substitute it with okay, I'm gonna take the the steps of Jesus. I'm gonna take the tears of Jesus and offer them to God the Father. So it's a way our Lord is calling us. You're thinking too much about work. It's uh, you're forgetting about our heavenly Father. So this is the time to go do this, right? You know. And it's like, you just have to catch yourself. You know, because the thought will come. And sometimes it's even Jesus, he's putting the thought in you. So you can say like, he, he's looking to see, let's see if he catches this one, right? He's like, it's like, a, for him it's a game, right? You know, those are like in the hours of the passion, we see, I send a dart of love into his heart or into his mind. See, see what he's going to do with it. 
And so if you take that dart of love and you give it back to him, right? So back to him is what? Well, I'm going to give him adoration. What do you want? I'm going to give him thanksgiving. But I'm going to give, I'm going to give you reparation. I'm going to, so that's how we have to start thinking. You know, that's the mindset. If you want to live in the divine world, you want to redo, you want to have acts in the divine world, that's what you have to do. So it's, okay, so I only have so much time in the day to do this. So you got to start being more, um, thinking about what's good enough for me, but or what am I going to give today, right? Because, okay, so all these divine acts that you're, you're generating, right? Well, our Lord is generating. The divine will is generating for them. Each of these are as, is a life of Jesus. It's a divine life. A divine life, you can create a divine life of adoration. And this, the only thing this divine life is going to do is adore the Heavenly Father. That's all. And in giving them the divine life, it's going to stay there forever, adoring the Heavenly Father. It's a divine act. It's never going to go away. That's divine fruit that lasts forever. And our Heavenly Father is going to receive that adoration. And then what's going to happen? Well, what we're seeing in the previous chapter, you get light. You know, you get all these suns, right? And you get the light of the divine one. Yeah, So, and this is what I was saying. This is substitute 101. This is the first step of substitution. It's you have to substitute your own sinful nature. And this is something that lasts the whole life. Your own self. Yeah. yeah. So if you, like, for example, if, if somebody has, um, well, the usual for guys, right? We look at all these images and we get passionate and we get, um, you know, all this luhuria, thoughts of luhuria, right? Of these desires of the of the flesh, right? We get the minute you get that, you substitute it by something divine, right? What well, is the best way to do it? The best way you can substitute is through the hours of the passion. Our Lord teaches us this is He's not telling you this, but He is substituting for all the sins, all the things that happen, you know, for all the bad looks, for all the bad thoughts, for all the bad touches, for all the Everything is in here. That's why, you know, to get it to live in the divine world, first you have to go to the humanity of Christ through the passion. That's, that's part of your purification too. As you go through the passion, it's going to clean up the whole closet. Yeah. Good. You substitute for something that is subjected to the world. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so living in a divine realm, you make sure you substitute for something that is divine. And that really, in my mind, I don't know what this is. That lift is short. No, lift is short. I need to make sure I go to that divine realm. It's not that. That is what's killing this divine realm. Right. Yes. Does anyone else struggle with that? I think you're getting it. We, we all struggle with that at some point. Yeah. So beautiful. So this is okay. So I'm going to leave the rest of the chapter because, well, maybe not. Uh, this is just so beautiful, right? In this way, you'll find form the consummation of the human thought and acquire the life of the divine thought. This is how you change your human nature to divine nature. Instead of human thoughts, now you're going to have divine thoughts. And you're still going to catch yourself having human thoughts. Now you just have to substitute them. This is the first step in substitution and getting to that point that we want to go to. The same way if the eye, here's about the eye. If the eye wants to look at something that displeases me, right? Or does not refer to me and the soul mortifies herself. She has consumed the human eye and acquired the eye of the divine life. Right, so we. This is the process. This is a metamorphosis. This is this is part of the stage of metamorphosing from the human will to the divine will. It's not going to happen overnight. It's, it's going to take our effort. 
to change our human nature to divine nature, right? We're also working on it. But it's, it takes a certain level of mortification and attention. This is why our Lord is always telling Lisa, be, atten be attentive and faithful. Because it's a mindset, it's a consciousness. It's realizing that at every point in the day and night, you're in the presence of the Holy Trinity. Uh, would you do that in the presence of the Holy Trinity? Mm, chances are not. Right? So it's that kind of attention. You know, it's, it's, it's our Lord can do it. He'll do it in us. She has consumed the human eye and acquired the eye of the divine life. Right? And so with the rest of your being. Oh, how I feel these new divine lives flowing in me, in Jesus. Taking part in everything I do. I love these lives, these divine lives so much that I surrender everything for love of them. What? Our Lord is surrendering everything for a divine life. These souls are first before me. There you go. You want to be first or last? These souls that live in the divine will right? Uh, first before me. And then if I bless them through them, others are blessed. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> they are the first to be benefited and loved. And through them, others too are benefited and loved. So all of these divine acts will, will benefit you first, because as you do this, as you intend to do this, you know, little by little, you're going to start receiving graces. You know, and you might not notice it at first, and then later on you might notice them, and then you go like, "Well, I'm I'm starting to feel this, this current of love coming in from the divinity." And then as you change, the other ones around you change too. Just anybody who takes the uh, hours of the passion to their home and see what happens to the rest of the family. You know, just the substitution. I mean, no, we're not no, no. Go around, I know we're not talking about that, but this yeah, is you're thinking about your head. If you can't carry that book around with you all the time, but if and and you have bad thoughts on and off all day, like yeah. look how she's dressed, or whatever. <laughs> can't can't you just place yourself in front of God and and say, you know what? I'm sorry for no, 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 no. thoughts. You he, can't. He, he's saying, I want you to destroy those thoughts. Right. Destroy. Destroy is not uh, have pity and mercy on me. No. Okay. Destroy is. We're going to destroy them. Destroy that thought. Yes. Okay. okay. You can, you see, that's a command prayer. Yes. That's that command. Thought. I okay. destroy that thought. I destroy that thought. With the power of the divine will, I destroy all that sinful thought. thought. Okay. And substitute it with what? Well, God, love, peace, love, okay. adoration, okay. blessings, okay. graces, divine will. Okay. Right? All for the coming of the kingdom. There you go. You know? Okay. Yeah. So, or after, or that. oh no, or and, or and everything. It's, it's, uh, it's, our Lord is saying, just take everything you want. You know, he's not saying just, just take a little bit. No, he's saying, take everything you want. You know, it's like, that's the difference between the sons and the servants, right? The servant yeah. has, he's not going to go up to the refrigerator and take all this stuff out. Yeah. You know, the son will, yeah. he'll, he'll go create his oh. tremendous meal, right? So that's how we are. We can take anything. What? The beauty, the peace, the mercy, the love, the tears, the joys, the sufferings. You can take everything. Everything is there for the take. It's like a big store and you have unlimited purchasing potential. Right? You can take everything. Just make it your own. That's what he says. Just take it your own. It's divine. You're living in the divine will. You can take it. So, but yeah, no, it takes, he says, you must destroy it. Right. You got to destroy the sinful nature. So, you know, so somebody was, I was having a, a conversation with somebody over here, you know, that was visiting and it's from Ireland. He says, uh, oh yeah, I know some of the people that, that uh, go to the divine will cynical. I said, yeah. And he says, yeah, there's such a sad people. There's sad people. I said like, why? They're all kind of like grumpy and and they said like oh yeah well you haven't met the real people that live in the divine world because people living the divine world they're always happy they're always joyful 
<laughs> right. So that that me that means you you take yourself lightly, right? You take yourself lightly. You're enjoying your life. You know, you guys got. We have the best treasure of all. He's given us everything. He's given us the keys to the kingdom. So there's nothing to be sad about. Nothing to be fearful. There's nothing to, you know, he's even said in one, in one chapter, when the destruction comes, when this, thera, this third, um, what is it called? This, this, this third, yeah. This, this third renewal. Yeah, thank yeah. you for the glitch in the head. Right? <laughs> so this third renewal, when it comes, he's going to protect the children of the divine world. Because he's receiving all this honor and glory and all this bounty and all this. They are redoing the acts. They're multiplying. They're substituting for everybody. Why would he take them away? Because their acts are done. If they take us away, it's because our acts are done. And he's received everything. That, that's why Luisa, he was around for, she was around for 82 years, almost. You know, because that's a long life, right? Because she, she got a lot to do. <laughs> All right, so they are the first benefited and loved. You think if destruction comes, he's not going to pull you out of there? You will be the first loved if you live in the divine, if you do this, if you substitute. Well, why then and not now? How do we know when that's going to start? I, mean, what, I don't understand. Well, oh, if we're doing it now. No, we're, we're talking about this. You, you are doing this now, and you're going to be benefited now. Okay. Right. So regardless of this mess that's happening around us, right, you will be protected. So you will die. be safe. Yeah. I mean, it's well, our, our earthly life. You know, once we die, you know, you go to live in the divine will forever. That's not a bad thing. That's a very good thing. actually. That's we saw wanted to die all the time since it was the time that she was 20 years old. Are you taking me now? Are you taking me now? Are you taking me now? Are you taking me? Now? Are we there yet? <laughs> you know, and like, yeah. And like, yeah, yeah. And our Lord would say, eh, just a little more time. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, for God, there's no time. Just a little time. Just a little time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But the worst thing you can do is, is go to heaven. All right. So that's volume 11 for you. So now we're into substituting in a different manner. Once you've been able to substitute your sinful ways, now we're going to substitute in a divine manner, right? First, we have to substitute in us and then substitute for others. And substituting the acts of creatures. Volume 12, February the 4th, 1919. And we're only halfway through, okay? So uh, then after this, my sweet Jesus added, beloved daughter, birth from my life, come into my will. Come and see how much there is to substitute for so many acts of mine, still suspended, not yet substituted for by creatures. So this was back in 1919, 100 years ago or so. You think the acts are still there? Yeah, they're there for us to take. So come on, it's time to start, right? My will must be in you as the first wheel of the clock. If it moves, all the other wheels move, and the clock signals the hours and the minutes. So all the accord is in the motion of the first wheel. And this, and if this first wheel has no motion, the clock is stopped. What is he saying there? Luisa needs to start. So who needs to start it? We do. You do. That's why when you substitute, when you say, I want to do an act in the divine will now, I intend to, to do the creed in the divine will or anything you want to do, right? So it takes your intention to do an act in the divine will. That's what starts the whole motion, right? So if, what happens if we just stay like passive? Nothing's going to happen. It's not going to move. We have to start. The divine will is not going to start it. Jesus is not going to start it. God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, they're just watching to see when you're going to start. If you don't start, nothing's going to happen. That's what I'm saying. We have a year to do this, starting today. Right? 
Oh, okay, because, you know, in today's gospel, we talked about uh, the, we heard about the gospel of the fig tree. The fig tree is given a year to be fertilized with divine, all these divine seeds and divine fertilizer, which is the, the knowledge of the divine will, you know, and given a year to grow and produce divine fruit. If we don't do this in this year, if we don't do this right now. This is why the, this is the importance right now. Why? Because the earth is getting darker and darker and we need these suns to dispel what's coming. Right? Agree? Mm -hmm. So it takes your will. This is why your will is so important. We will never lose our will. We have free will. It's your free will to do this or not to do this. Is your will to start the motion of the divine machine, right? So, in, in every moment of the day, as you go, that's why, you know, we have to, we do all the acts in the divine will, right? You're setting the motion continuously, right? It's a, it has to be a continuous act. So it's come Jesus, come and play with me. Come Jesus, come and pray with me. Come Jesus, come and cook with me, clean. Everything in the divine will. Because this is starting. The more you do that, the less you're thinking of your own human will. Right? So you lose your sinful nature because you're thinking in a divine nature now. Right? And then he says, okay. So we know there's all these acts that are substituted, that are pending, they're suspended. They need to be substituted, and it's up to us to put the motion of the first wheel. In the same way, the first wheel in you must be my will. Come divine will, come and pray in me. Come divine will, come and talk in me, which must give motion to your thoughts, to your heart, to your desires, to everything. He's saying it. I'm not saying nothing of this is mine. It's all his. It's your desires, your heart, your thoughts. The first will must be the divine will. Always, right? That's why we say in the divine will. Always. What does that mean? Every minute of the day, right? And since my will is the central wheel of my being, of creation, and of everything, everything is everything. Saints, angels, and everything else. Your motion coming up from this center will come to substitute for many acts of creatures, multiplying in the motions of all as central motion. It will come to lay before my throne and on their behalf, the acts of creatures substituting for everything. Therefore be attentive to your mission is great. It is fully divine. That is substituting. So you, you go from substituting on your own acts to now substituting for all creatures, for all souls, past, present, and future of all time, since Adam until the end of time. It's on behalf of all. You're substitu and what are you substituting? Well, you have all these suspended acts you can use. That's the raw material that we have to take to present to who? To the majesty. Where's my majesty? Well, my majesty is everywhere, right? So, this is what we need to do in this year to produce divine figs. We're going to call them now. From now on, it's divine figs. <laughs> so, when we're at our chemicals at the end, if we do prayers, our attention should be this, this, this chemical. Yes. yes. Not for right. individuals or. No, no. So it's like, let's say, so we're going from the old to the new, the new wineskins. These are the new wineskins. This is how we have to be praying, right? This is how we have to be thinking. This is how we have to be acting. This is what, this is our new selves. Think of this. We're, we're going we're gonna to be like this butterfly that's going to turn divine. That's what our Lord wants. He wants us divine. He doesn't want us human anymore. He wants us divine. You have to leave the earth behind to, to gather your wings and go up to heaven. Right? So, yeah, there's a lot of work to do.
No, no, no. So like, look. Okay, so Padre Pia is like a special case because yeah. he was the humanity of Christ on earth, a replica, a reflection. Now, do we know that Padre Pio was doing divine acts? We'll know when we get to heaven. Yeah, but, it, you know, he didn't really know because our Lord gave it to, gave it to Luis. So it's, it's, there's a difference, right? It's the, the glory. And this is something that uh, was beyond the, the scope of this, this talk, right? But the glory of the souls that live in the divine will is tremendous. There are other little gods. There are other little queens next to the queen mama. There are, and this is what we liked the other day, right? We said, but we are, the way will be little queens, queens with a little Q, and she'll be the queen with the big Q. Okay. That's so cute. Right? So there's going to be a difference. Because we're co-redeeming, just like Jesus. Not so, not only co-redeeming, we're co-creating. Right. Which is amazing. That's what little gods do is co-create. What are you creating? Divine lives. It's divine lives. You're creating divine lives. Did, did you think you could ever do that? Well, Jesus, the one down, Jesus created all these divine lives, right? But you are putting, you are the first wheel. You're putting the first wheel of, you're putting this in motion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have to move it. You have to move it. Yeah. Okay, so notice here, substituting for everything. What is everything? <laughs> the saints, the angels, all the kingdoms, all creation, all redemption, all sanctification. Yeah. Even, the, even the unborn. They're souls. Well, I think that, yeah, it's, it's, okay, so, but notice what, it, okay, so let's, let's try to answer in the divine will. Who are the first benefited? Once you're in the divine will, right? Okay, so there's the concept of this is something, this is more, this is for the next talk, right? When you redo your acts, your own acts, I think we saw something about this. It's a single act. I think maybe it's coming down the line. It's a single act. When you redo your acts in the divine, which by the way, you can do. You redo your acts in the divine. You redo. What? You already had an act and now you're redoing it. Well, your original act was done in the human will. It has a human seed. This is a later chapter. Mm -hmm. Then when you redo them in the divine will, now they have a divine seed. When our heavenly father looks down at your acts, he only sees one act. He only sees one act. He sees the divine will act. He doesn't see the human acts anymore. Mm -hmm. He sees the good acts, mm -hmm. right? So that, but that's, we're getting ahead. That's, that's, that's a little farther down. And substituting the acts of creatures. But when you're doing, you're doing something in your past of all, you're concluding yourself, aren't you? Of yeah, all, I mean, you're absolutely. part of humanity. Yeah, you're absolutely. part of all. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're good, right? Um, uh, we're doing this. Uh, your mission grade is fully divine. Okay, we're on page seven. Uh, volume 12, February 13, 1919. Continue my usual state. I was searching and with anxiousness for my always lovable Jesus. And he all goodness came and told me, beloved daughter of my volition, do you want to come into my will to substitute in a divine manner for so many acts not done by the other brothers? Do you want to? Yeah. Right? Are you sure? Yeah. For many others done huma humanly. How do you say it? Huma humanely or human? humanly? Humanly. 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 For others done, others done humanly, and for the other acts holy, like Padre Pio's acts that mm -hmm. were holy, yes, but human and not in the divine order. Mm -hmm. I think that answered a few questions, yeah. right? I did everything in the divine order. Jesus did everything in the divine order, but I'm not yet content. I want you to enter into my will in a divine manner to come to kiss my acts. Again, it's 
come to kiss my axis to make them your own, right? Substituting for everything as I did. He wants us to do this. Therefore, come, come, I long for it. I desire it so much that I put myself as though in feast when I see you enter into this divine sphere. And multiplying yourself together with me, you multiply in everyone and love repairs substitute for all and for each one in the divine manner. Can we do this? Yes, we can. Is it going to take some effort? Yes, it will. Are you going to do it in the next year? Yes, you'll have to. Right? <laughs> I no longer <laughs> I no longer recognize human things in her, but all my things. Okay, so this is Jesus' stuff, right? This is no longer your stuff, but it's, it's right. divine, right? My love, whose love? Jesus' love. My love rises and multiplies. The reparations multiply to where? To the infinite. Because they're divine. The, that's the difference between divine and human. The human fruit ripens in seven days is gone, right? These divine acts, they last forever. Substitutions are divine. What joy, what feast. How could you be sad, right? The very saints, notice this, very saints, Padre Pio unites with me and makes feast ardently waiting for a sister of theirs to substitute his own acts. You can substitute the acts of Padre Pio. How about that? St. John Paul II, that was yesterday. Uh, St. Juan Capistrano today and tomorrow. Yeah, every, all the saints that are in heaven. Okay, but you know, you can actually do, you can also, you can also offer the acts of Luisa that were in the divine manner. Peter. All right, so ardently waiting for who? For you to substitute their own acts wholly in the human order, but not in the divine order. Then pray me to let the creature enter soon this divine sphere mm -hmm. and that all of your acts be substituted only with the divine will and with the imprint of the eternal one. I did this for all. Now I want you to do it for all. All of us in this call. Our Lord wants us to do it for all. All right? It's work, people. And when we say we're doing it in the time, well, we are doing it for all. Yeah, it has to be that's, done for all. So that's the mm -hmm. thought we need to have in our heads. Yeah. It's, it's almost like, think about this for a second. You have to change your mindset to stop thinking that, let's say, like, I'm Felipe. I'm not Felipe anymore. I'm everyone. Right. Yes. When I pray, I pray for everyone for all of us here for all of us even the ones i don't like right all of us for who else for the saints in heaven for them too for the angels for creation for all of us it's it's all encompassing god is everywhere you're entering into the all right it's not just me anymore me just disappears <laughs> Okay, so here are the, uh, the, these are the heavyweights. This is volume 28. After this, I continued my round in the divine fiat to bring all the acts of creatures as homage to my creator. This is what Luisa was doing, right? Day in and day out. Every day she was in bed doing this. I thought to myself, if I can gather everything that they have done and then close everything in the divine will, will they not change into acts of divine will? Would your acts done in the human will change into divine acts? Okay. Some say yes, some say no. In the human will? No, no, no. That's a, that's a, okay, so hang on. Luisa is asking the question. If I can gather everything, so like Luisa feels powerful now. If I can gather everything and they have done, that they have done, and then close everything in the divine will, will they not change into the acts of divine will? Yes. 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 
All right, let's see what our Lord says. Our Lord says, my sweet Jesus added, my daughter in all the acts of creatures, each of them possesses its seed according to how it has been done. If it has not been done in my divine feet, it does not possess its seed. Therefore, it cannot be an act of my will. Hang on a second, people. He's saying that the human will, acts done in the human will, they have a human seed. Yeah, no. It's, acts done in the human will do not have a divine seed. So all the saints in heaven that did their acts in the human will, they have human acts. Right? Only if you have the divine seed, then you have divine acts. How do you get the divine seed? You call the divine yeah, will. Right. Okay. That's all. It doesn't take too much. You don't have to mortify yourself too much. Right? So it says, raise the knowledge, yes. Because in the act of doing it, its seed of light was missing, the seed of light. So the divine will has a seed of light. That's how he describes it. Which has the virtue of changing into sun, since the seed of light will be present as prime act in the act of the creature. So, in summary, human acts done in the human will are, they have a human seed and they perish in seven days, right? Divine acts done in the divine will have a divine seed and they never perish. They'll be the, the, the fruits of paradise. They'll be the figs of paradise. They'll be never ending. They'll be eternal. They'll be infinite. They'll be wonderful. But what did you just say about human Let's say that the acts done in the human will yeah. have a human seed yeah. and they will always stay human. Okay. You know, therefore they have an expiration date, which is about seven days, and then they you know, you know how that goes. So you cannot change the acts done in the human will. That's the answer. The souls that live in the divine will, however can now start doing the acts in the divine will. They can redo their acts because they belong to you. It's your will that did them. Now it's your will that's replacing. What happens is at the end of the day, when our heavenly father looks down on your acts, he only sees one act. He sees the act done in the divine will. So I'll give you an example. So you've gone to mass for the last, I don't know, so many X years, right? You know, every day, right? In your human will. So if you were to die today without knowing the divine will, then you have human acts. They perish in seven days. But the minute you learn about the divine will, start going to mass in the divine will, now your acts have taken a divine value. They never perish. They are eternal. They're infinite. When our heavenly father looks down, he sees those acts. He doesn't see the other acts because they perished. They're gone. They disappear. But now you have these acts done in the divine will. It's yours with a divine seed, a seed of sun, a seed of light would be present as prime act in the act of the creature. In the acts of creature, it happens that if a person has a seed of flowers, by sowing it, he will have flowers. If in your act you sow that seed of fruits, then you will have fruits. Neither will the seed of flowers give fruits, nor will that of fruits give flowers, but each one will give according to the nature of its seed. All right? The same with the acts of creatures. If in the act there was a good intent, a holy purpose to please me, to love me, in each act we'll see the seed of goodness, in another the seed of sanctity, the seed of pleasing me, the seed of loving me. These seeds are not light. They're good seeds, right? They perish in seven days. But they symbolize some of the flowers, some of the fruits, some of the little plants, some of the precious gem. And I feel the homage of the flower, of the fruit, and so forth, but not the homage of a sun. What's the difference between the sun and the flower? The sun gives life, right? The flower cannot tell the sun, give me, give me, give me your, uh, the, sun, the flower cannot tell the sun, here, take my life. No, the, the flower is flower and the sun is sun. And as all these act, acts are gathered to enclose them in my fiat, they remain as they are. Your acts remain as they are. So what does that mean? If you call the divine will in your acts, you have divine will acts. If you forget to call the divine will in your acts, 
poof, they disappear. They, they won't last. They will expire. So what might be called the divine action or God's action? They're divine. Right, they're divine. But I, I think people might, godly acts might register more than human acts. <laughs> they're infinite, they're immense, they're eternal. They're eternal acts. They will last until the end of time and beyond. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It says each one with the nature that the seed gave it, and they appear as acts that the creature can do not as acts that my divine will can do with a seed of light in the acts of creatures. The seed of divine will is not given by it, if not when the creature lives in the divine will and gives it the first place of honor in her acts. That's pretty clear, right? So if you live in the divine will, you call in the divine will to come uh, live in your acts, the divine will has to be the first place of honor more than anything you would die to to not do the act in the divine will. you have to give it your your life you're giving up your life so you can do this life this this act in the divine will has to be the most this is why the divine will has to be the most important thing in your life every single day you have to fertilize this ground you have to move the wheel if your wheels are not moving there's no motion there's death so, Felipe, one thing that's a little confusing to me is in this uh, entry that we're reading, Jesus is explaining, of course, that the acts somebody does, even with a good holy intention, etc., cetera, um, it's still only a human act. But, but it precedes all of this with Louisa asking, well, if I can gather everything that they've done and enclose it in the divine will, won't they change into acts of divine will? Yeah, well, the answer is no. She seems to be asking a question that we've we just looked at uh, ten years, eleven years before in 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 volume twelve, and we're in in volume twenty eight right now. So that's how do we explain that? Oh, it's, uh, it's uh, the knowledge is progressive, the grace yeah. is progressive. You know okay. what you see in volume eleven was good at the time that she was at, right? She was learning. She was learning. She was in doing her tracing. She was. It's like we're saying, you have to progress. You have to do your tracing first. Then you have to do your substitution. And now we're doing divine acts. You're not going to do divine acts overnight. Mm -hmm. it, you have to go through those levels of purgation, illumination, and then divinization. So I suppose it, this, it, is, this vol volume 28, this is divinization. We're at that. We're there, right? Well, right. I mean, we're visiting. <laughs> so I should look at this as a, in, a, in a comforting way, because even here she is, the mystic herself, undergoing everything that Jesus is doing in her. And even 10 years later, in nuanced ways, she's still getting a, a well, much deeper. Think about this. Think about this. Jesus was putting this thought in her mind. Yes. For us, for you and I, so we can both understand. It. Yeah. You know, so. The question arises, well, can you, if you're doing everything divinely, why can't I just take the human stuff and change it to divine, right? It should be easy, but no, it's not like that. It's, it's a, similar, a similar metaphor is if you build your house, right? Think about what you build your house with. If you build your house with mud as the foundation, as the walls, right? You could actually go in there and, and beautify it around. It can, you know, paint in, make it real nice, put some nice flooring, put some nice, you know, accoutrements, right? It's still the house is made of mud. It's not changing. But if you build your house of gold, now the house is gold, you know, that's the center of it. Everything is around it. It's wonderful, it's beautiful, but the house is made of gold. That's a divine act. That it's a it's an act made by God. It's divine, you know. Therefore, it has immense value, infinite. It's tremendous. Why? Because Jesus is doing it. The divine will is doing it in you. You're just setting the the, the wheels in motion to get this done, right? So but to make sure I'm Luisa, not getting. Okay, go ahead. Luisa, Luisa was wondering. Okay, so 
give me some light, Lord. You know, was, can, I, can I change my acts in the, in the human world? And our Lord says, no, you cannot do it. If it has not been done in my divine fiat, it does not possess the seed, therefore not be an act of my will. Our acts from before in the human will, they're expired. They're gone. Okay. Okay. So Jesus did the impact of the spending, whether we did it in the divine world, or we didn't do it in the divine world. We didn't do it in the divine world, but he did it in the divine world. It was the spending. He that he must claim that out. Well, we, we have to we have to move. We have to change. We have to change from our human will to our divine will. That's what he's saying. You have to stop being human and start being divine. Mm -hmm. if, if, you on, if you keep on being human, well, we you do divine acts now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now okay. the thing is this. So, well, so there's this concept. Confusing. It's a little yeah. confusing. There's there's a concept of redoing your acts again, yeah. right? When you redo acts. Right? Your acts from the past, they what they were, they expired. Right. But now you have the act because Heavenly Father sees one single act. He sees all the masses that you gone. Right? The masses that were done in the human will, they're gone. Now you have divine will acts. So now this our Heavenly Father will look down on your masses and say, like, check, check mark. Right? Those are divine acts. So Okay, so this is that, yeah, right. So now we're getting more, more complex. But the thing is this, so we can redo all our acts so that now they're done in the divine will. Actually, once we live in the divine will, we should try to redo all of our stuff so that we don't have to go to purgatory, right? Because in purgatory, you fill those voids of love with light, right? Through painful, through pain, right? So what he's saying is, well, Try to get, that's why we have to do all this here. Once you get into the divine, we're doing all the acts and everything you do and praying like this. Now we have this, this eternal value, this, this divine acts, these sons. They're yours. They become yours. This is the act that when Luisa died, uh, you know, something must be, yeah, the fruit. Uh, <laughs> it's when, when we get to heaven, we'll see the acts done in the divine world. Luisa saw it. They're yours. Right? Mm -hmm. This is the last word, the spiritual testament of this. Okay, so you have you have the house that you had before made of mud, it's gone because now you have to replace it by this house made of gold. Right? You have this house made of gold. Those are the right. now the, this is this is your acts. Now for other people, right. Lisa could also ask, well, could I do it for others? Could I make their their and he say, no, their house is made of mud. You can't change it for them. Okay. However, ha however, you, you can give back to God everything that they should all have given him. So you can substitute for all the glory he has not received from them. Now you, as a soul that lives in the divine, you can give God to God the Father that glory. And he will receive it as those souls were doing you know when you do the when you um call the acts in the saints and this is not in this document but when you call the acts of the saints you offer them to god the father along with all his suspended acts and the the actually it's called the triple acts the acts of jesus mary and luisa because they're divine acts as you substitute and offer them to god the father on behalf of them for their accidental glory now they are going to receive accidental glory. And the people on earth are going to receive. Yes. So through this accidental glory, it's similar that you know, all the graces are showered down upon the souls in purgatory and the souls living on earth. So that's, that's the part of substitution 301. We've seen substitution at the personal level. Now we've seen substitution on behalf of all mankind. This is substitution for the saints. It's confusing, but you know, the it's more confusing. we talk about it, the more we understand. That, that's why I say, like, we ha you have a year to study this document, fully understand it, and fully do what it says. Oh, you know, great. put put the wheel in motion. This is what this this the the topic of this talk should be. How do you put the wheels in motion? There's a bug in here. Everyone's getting.
Yeah. Everyone, everyone, everyone the wheel should fall. So why should they? If they're not living in the okay. bubble, why should they so, have the vinyl rights? Is that clear, Steve? Yeah. I mean, it's uh, well, um, boy, it sounds uh, like I should be in the room with everyone else because it sounds like maybe they're kind of asking some of the question. I, I don't know, and that's why I sure don't want to leave without having a little bit more clarity, because she's saying, if I can gather everything that they've done and enclose it in the divine will, won't these change into divine acts? Well, the answer to that question is yes, not no, right? Because she's taking everything of everything that everyone has done, but Jesus has already redone it all. So she's taking the redone life that Jesus has done and placing it into the divine will to give God glory. Am I correct? All right. So let me let me see if so that I, if it finishes right here. She's not asking if she does it in the divine will. She's asking if she does it in the human will. That's the difference. Oh, OK. Then that would make sense. I think that's where I'm hung up. So that's the nuance of the, of the question. So the other thing is this, right, is as long as you're alive, and kicking mm -hmm. and you can do acts in the divine will then you you can do these things once you pass over to the other side that's your ability is yes. done that's, right. that's it you were close you're at wherever point you were now the only thing is that the souls that live in the divine will can now help you receive more accidental glory okay that's easy okay. right yes we are we are cut off you know it's like that's why right. as long as, yeah, as long as you can stay alive and do these acts in the divine will, you're receiving merit. Once, once you pass okay. over, it's the game is over. You can't do anything. Okay, but that's, but that's in the future and that's not the direct question that she's asking. She, she wants to grab everything of everyone and change them into divine acts take right. the acts of everyone so that she can apply what Jesus has already done as she's entering in with him so that now it becomes a fruitful divine act. And that is everything that we've just been studying. Yeah. But the say that it's again, the, the, like the saint in heaven, he's reached the maximum of his glory and he's done. His glory is based on the acts he did during his life. Mm -hmm. In all his life, he just did his human will. Mm -hmm. Even though they're saintly, yeah. those acts had a maybe the seed of a plant or a flower. Right. They, they had good intentions. But he sat there. You know, he's not going to have any more. Right. Now, what we can do is help them further to receive this accidental glory. And so they will grow in, in, in divinity. They will grow in divinity. Then the, this is the other part. That the saints, the saints in heaven, you know, one of the services that the souls that live in the divine world will provide to the saints in heaven is once they arrive, once, like, for example, right now, Luisa can be in heaven right now, and all the saints are coming up to Luisa, and they're saying, like, can I borrow one of your divine acts? And they say, Luisa will say, yeah, go ahead, take, take this. Oh, can I borrow this one? Yeah, yeah. She's, she's lending them out, these divine acts. So that the saints in heaven will actually penetrate into those divine acts and to receive divine, they'll see the new joys and the new feast and the new happiness and, and all this that our Lord has done, right? And they will never be able to consume all that act because it's infinite. But the saint will come back with a new sense. He was in a vacation, right? He was, he was really good. It was the best vacation of his life. They say, can, can I take another act? And it will be like that. That will be the service no, that the children. That? This, this is in the book of heaven. Yeah, yeah. Exactly Look it up in the app. Yeah, it's in the app. Get the app. Felipe, it's in can, there. We, can we substitute this or is, redo it, those we that are alive? Hmm? For people that are alive now, like for our children, could we take all their acts from the moment of their conception till they okay. die? Well, well, let's think. Let's see if we can answer them in terms of, you know, the 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 seed of your children's acts. Right. Is it human? Is it a flower? It's a human. Now, is it yeah. flower or is it a diamond? Okay, so maybe we want to think that they're like pearls and diamonds. Well, as long as it's uh, it's not a divine act. 
as long as right. it's not done in the divine will. Right. As long as they don't have knowledge of the divine will, right. it's not going to be a divine act. Okay. Okay. But yeah, you whatever you do is going to fall under. No, the accident of glory is for the saints in heaven. Okay. Okay. Just like what Jesus did for us. Yeah, but however, however, okay, ha. Huh? So our our Lord, um, Luisa meets one of her confessors in heaven, and her confessor says, "Can can I?" Her confessor said, "What did he say?" Okay. Her confessor said, "Can you repeat that that you did to me while I was alive?" And Luisa's like, "What? What are you talking about?" Oh yeah, you took all the pains and suffering of our Lord. You took His tears. You took His everything of our Lord, and you showered upon me during someone's life. That's what we can do for our families. Well, the confessor was alive at the time. So you can take all the pains of Jesus, his blood, his tears, the water from his side. You can take all the divine acts, all the divine qualities of God and shower upon them, upon our souls. That are still alive. Still alive. Yes. Yep. Yes, because right, because in that sense, I agree. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, only, we can only apprehend. Well, wait, wait, wait. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead and unmute. Yeah, I think. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Okay. That is your name, Steve. Yeah, for so for our children or anybody else, like like someone is asking, I agree. Someone who is who is alive, who is who has not uh, had the knowledge to ask for their human acts to have been changed into divine acts by their cooperating in the divine will, um, they cannot do that. However, we who are in the divine will in our fusing, I believe can we can't take their act and make it a divine act no because it's it's what they have done it's a human act however jesus did redo the life he redid everything so that they are potentially suspended they are divine acts as he glorified the father with them so i can enter in with jesus and ask that they be applied praise god for it and that and that the children or my loved ones, whoever I'm praying, everyone throughout all time, that this become applicable uh, so that it become, um, let me think of the word, um, again, appropriated for them. Appropriated is probably the bad word. But uh, no, no, so this is while they're alive. While they're alive. No, no, so like, this, is, this is what... Um, I don't remember who the who the uh, confessor was. I, I think I have to go back and, and check. But basically, he said, you know, all this that you did for me gave me such joy and beauty. And you have no idea, like, everything I received. Uh, my heart was full of this drops of light. I don't know if I'm confusing. I'm not merging two chapters now. And Luisa said, like, well, can I just see your heart? You know? And he goes, yeah, here. I'm sure. And Luisa says she saw the most beautiful heart full of this drops of light emanating from it. And it was just like so lovely. She was like, wow. She was in ecstasy. Huh? He was dead. He, received he, was, dead. he, he was dead when he died. He received no, no, but he's saying that he was receiving all this divine light during his life from Luisa. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and also, this also. Right. He didn't know it. Okay. And it's, it's also, um, I guess this confessor, he, he would go to Lisa and he would read the book of heaven. Oh, uh, yeah, it's coming back to me now. So the confessor would, would come to Lisa every morning to wake her up, right? And, and uh, he would also, he would, uh, well, he would read the, the diary from Lisa. And, you know, all this light that uh, Lisa received from our Lord, which was, Luisa received of the rivers and oceans and seas of divine light that came into Luisa. You know, she was only able to transmit like these drops of light to the confessor. And the confessor received those drops of light. 
and those drops of light were in his heart. And they were so beautiful that she was like, he was in so many, that was his joy in heaven. Let me put it into it. What I'm trying to say is we will have the joys in heaven as well because we're reading the book of heaven. As you read these joys of light, you know, these little drops of light will, will stay in your heart. And that'll be your joy in heaven. Can we claim those? No, he's not for us against the people that are no. alive. Oh, that we're alive? Yeah. That are alive. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Let, let's try to finish here because uh, it's it's getting late. Um, so, we we're over here. Um, it gives the first place of honor. It's, okay, so this is the last one. This is the last one? Oh, no. There's, there's still more. There's actually like three more chapters. Ask him for the ask for the kingdom of the divine will, volume thirty. I, I look, I think that the more we think about it, the more we pray, the more we meditate, the more we talk about this, it'll become clear over time. So don't feel bad yeah. if we don't understand, because right. it'll become clear. Our Lord, and if you have a question, don't ask me. Ask, ask, ask our Lord. He'll answer. He'll answer. He's got all the answers. It says volume thirty, February twenty fourth, nineteen thirty two. After this, I continue my round in the acts of the divine will, and oh. How I would like to embrace everything, also what all the blessed have done, so as to give it in each act an honor and glory to God and to the saints, and make use of the very acts done by them to honor them. So I guess my question is, well, can we do that? Can we take, embrace everything, have all the, everything that the blessed have done, so as to give in each act an honor and glory to God and to the saints, and make use of the very acts done by them to honor the saints and God. Right? Can you do that? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. And my beloved Jesus said, mm -hmm. my daughter, when the creature remembers, honors, glorifies what was done by her creator, for love of her and by her redeemer, to place her in safety and by all the saints, she becomes a protector of all the acts. The heavens, the sun, and all creation feel protected by the creature. My terrestrial life, Jesus, my, my Jesus life down here, my pains, my tears feel a refuge in her and find their protector. The saints find in their memory not only protection, but their own acts vivified, renewed in the midst of creatures. And some they feel like being given back to them in their acts. Okay, so this is what we've been talking about doing redoing the acts of the saints right you take the acts of the saint right and once you offer them we be well we become the protectors the acts become vivified and they're renewed in the midst of creatures why just remembering in the divine will and offering them back they become vivified they receive new grace and new life the saints in heaven right any saint you know the everybody has gone through heaven right mm -hmm. they feel life being given back to them in their acts that's why we remember in the divine will remember the saint of the day every day we offer them in the when you go to holy eucharist they can offer you your eucharist united to the saint of the day united to the triple acts of jesus mary and luisa for the glory of the kingdom for the coming of the kingdom and for the glory of god and for the accidental glory of the saint this is what we do in the divine world. This is what we need to be doing, right? How many beautiful works and virtues remain as though buried in the low world because there is no one who remembers them and honors them. So our Lord is saying, every time you remember and honor the saints in the past, you're doing this. Every time you remember what Jesus did, every time you remember what God the creator did in creating man. You're giving a great joy and feast in heaven to God our creator. No, 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 no. All the saints can. You know, if you have, if you know somebody that was a saint and must be in heaven, you can do this for them too. They love I, I would do it for all the souls that live in the divine world that have passed away. Like I heard Nelson, there's, there was a Nelson that recently passed away. Then 
he lived in the divine womb. And it's, yeah, it's in the website of the association. All right, where are we? The creature becomes a protector with her memory and all her works, creation, redemption, and everything that the saints have done make themselves the protector of who? Of the souls that live in the divine will, right? They place themselves around her to protect her. To defend her, they act as sentries for her. And while they take refuge in her to be protected, each of our works, all my pains, and all the works and virtues of my saints compete among themselves, taking turns to act as her guard of honor, that she may remain defended from everything and from everyone. That's why the souls that live in that divine world are safe. And then there is no greater honor you can give when you make use of them in order to ask in each act for the kingdom of the divine will. In each act. Right? They feel called and employed to act as messengers between heaven and earth of a kingdom so holy. You must know the past, present, and future. Everything must serve for the kingdom of the divine fiat. That's why any prayer should be done for the coming of the kingdom of the divine will. That is a center. Why? You're remembering asking for this kingdom by, by means of our works and the virtues and acts of all all feel place at its service and take their office in place of honor. So you're going around as necessary because it serves to prepare the kingdom of the divine will. Therefore, be attentive and continuous. Continuous. All right. Our Lord is saying that as we ask for the kingdom, as we prepare, it's like we're preparing for the kingdom to come. We want it to come, right? Once we have the kingdom of the divine will here on earth as it is in heaven, We'll get to the fulfillment of our Lord's prayer. We'll have the kingdom here on earth. It takes your prayers. That's what he's saying. It takes your prayers. It takes our prayers. The kingdom will not come until a certain number of acts have been done. Acts in the divine will. That's why we all have to strive to bring more people in because they will help out a little. Right? All right. So... Everything. So, okay. So these are the, the saints also talk about this. The saints are the protector, the protector of our acts. The saints are competing to, uh, to be your guard of honor, your protector. Right. That's beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. We don't have to worry about phones. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, it's in the coming to relation, our Lord says, I will protect the souls that live in the divine will. That's why we're here in Ave Maria. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's that. Now, the, these are, okay, so listen to this. I know Steve would last minute. Acts in the divine will are transformed into divine acts. This is very important. Now, this is volume 34. So this is one of the biggies. Okay, so this is good. Afterwards, you know, the document is in the, uh, in the website. Let's see. Afterwards, I continued to think about the divine will and my sweet Jesus added, my daughter, as the creature calls my will into her acts in order to live in it, my will invests the creature and her act with its creative strength and renews its divine life. How about that? This is what happens. When you call on the divine will to come and pray in your prayer or cook, cook in your cooking, right? Your, the divine will invest you and your act with its creative strength. What is that? What's the creative strength? It's the power to create a whole universe. That's his creative strength. His creative power. It can create anything. It can create a divine life renews its divine life. In this case, it's renewing our divine life. But it can create the creative strength. It's the power of the Heavenly Father when he said fiat and all the stars were made and all the heavens and all that. That's his creative power, his creative strength. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> One would hope. One would hope. 
Suppose that she calls. Okay, so th this is the key, right? Suppose that you call the divine will when you are operating. Listen to what my divine will does. This is what's actually happening. Right? If you need to know the mechanics, the architecture of this thing, right? The divine will cause, it calls in act all the times that she has operated. Okay, let, let's start with an example because this is kind of confusing, right? Okay, so suppose you call the divine will when you go to mass, right? It calls in act all the times that you have gone to mass in the divine will. It unites them together as if they were one single act. Okay, so all the times you have done acts in the divine will, they're compressed and become one act. And this is what our heavenly father sees, right? He unites them together as if they were, and putting its creative strength, it transforms everything that you have done and you are doing into divine. That's how it works. That's the mechanics. Okay, even if it was a saint, right? So the grace comes through time. And it's not until Luisa that the grace has been given for your acts to become divine. It wasn't time. This is the third renewal. Uh, okay, so this is okay. So the, the question is, is let, let me, yeah, now I got it. So this is, this is, uh, it's about the question why, why is it so unfair for like the saints of the past? to have done what we're doing now, but they're not getting the, like the glory, you know, or they're so much better, but they were doing all this perfectly, right? But they're like, they're not enjoying this. And the answer with the gospel is, you know, those laborers that came at the end of the day, they just happened to get there at the end of the day, they got the same pay. In the divine world, they get the, they got the same pay. They didn't, they didn't. Okay, so they got the same pay, but in the divine will, the pay is divine. The pay is divine with divine acts. So they got the pay uh, for their good human acts, but we're getting the pay for the divine. Why? I mean, it's like, you know, that's, that's that. But, okay, so hang on. But this is not the subject of this talk. All right, so let's, let's see. Let's see what this is. It transform. So what has happened, right? You call the divine will into your acts. Say, I want to pray in the divine will to do all the creeds, right? In the divine. Act. Okay. So our Lord takes all of your divine acts and he sees them as one, right? And then what does he do? He takes all them together, puts them together, become one, and puts his creative strength, his creative power, that he can build a universe with it. And transform everything you whoops, transform everything you have done and you're doing into divine. That's how you end up getting a divine act. It's transformed by God as he sees you're doing this. So our Lord is continuously watching over you. Is he doing a divine act? Mm -hmm. No. If I'm not doing a divine act, he retreats. But if I'm doing, if I'm calling him continuously, is he doing a divine act? Okay, boom, 
Creative power of the universe, divine act, boom. Next, are you still doing divine acts? Yes, okay. Creative power of the universe. He creates another universe. He creates another sun. And you know what? It's not in this chapter, but you know what he does in that sun? He puts it in the sky of your soul. It's yours. You can create. That's where we're talking about co-created. The soul, the soul, the soul is has the sky. And so these saintly souls that lived, you know, and celebrate all these masses and, and hit themselves with all these chains and stuff, right? Their, their skies were empty because they didn't have this creative power. But now we have creative power. So we're putting suns and stars in our skies. So when we get to heaven, we'll be able to enjoy those, those stars and suns are what we're going to share with the other saints, right? But those are divine acts. They're yours to keep. They're yours. This is your position. This, is, this will be your kingdom, your paradise in heaven. This will be your, uh, your home, your house, your room, what is it? your mansion, your mansion. This will be your mansion. And they'll be glowing. Hey, when we do it for ourselves, we're doing it for everyone else, though, too, right? So, I mean, they are receiving the fruit of it, correct? Okay, so you are creating, well, not you. The divine will with the creative strength is creating a divine act that becomes yours. Yes. And in this divine act, each divine act has a divine life. Yes. Divine life is, is another Jesus. You have created a Jesus, right? And this Jesus, this divine, it can go all, all around the universe, adoring God and blessing God and thanking God and doing all these things, right? And it's pouring all the graces down on all humankind. Right. Present and future. So it is affecting the other ones, but it's still your act. It's your divine act. And so you're doing it good. And so what, this, this divine act now is helping it to bring about the kingdom of the divine world here on earth. Yeah, it's gonna restore so the order of creation. We're helping to restore what we should have had from yeah. the beginning. And as you do, you see what happens is this, right? So if you go look at the sky of the soul of Adam, it's beautiful. It has all these divine acts before the fall, right? Mm -hmm. But after Adam, after the fall, all the souls have an emptiness. They have no stars. There's no suns, no skies. Maybe they had a flower. They'll have a flower in their, in their sky. There is a flower. But it was meant to be full of these stars and suns and sky and all this. So finally, you know, finally, the Lord's grace has given us the ability to do this. We are the chosen. We are the, uh, the benef yes, we are the, the beneficiaries of the, uh, of the, we, we, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all the all the saints, you know. This uh, we're giving you this document. Right? We're giving this document. You know, don't you think the saints would love to have this document? Yeah. They were saying like, "Oh yes. my God, so you guys, are, you guys are so fortunate. You're not doing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Say that again. To whom much is given, yeah. much is expected. And That's why you say, it, if you say that the. What it says if you bury it. <laughs> that if we don't use the this divine fertilizer, our Lord is gonna chop chop. Yeah. They say, oh yeah, it's, there's a great responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. But God had enough mercy. But but and then God has said, you know, I'm not gonna make that mistake again. So He's gonna have yeah. a test, right? That's day four, day five of the Virgin Mary book. There's a test. You know, if you don't pass the test, you can't live in the divine room. Well, what, are you, what are you saying, though, Felipe? I mean, all the saints would be would have their essential glory based on what Jesus has done for them. Granted, their their acts were not done in the divine will. They didn't have the gift of the divine will, but all that they did in their human will, which is good, holy, and and uh, perfect in the way that they could love and honor God, Jesus still substituted for them, did everything in the divine will perfectly no, no, for them. This is so so th their reward 
has to be no they're happy in heaven oh they they are they're they are living the beatific vision you know they are enjoying that however they don't have the divine acts to go with them but don't they as we intercede or as we live in the divine will isn't this made applied to them because no, is what jesus get, did they get more accidental glory that's all they can do and then they can come and enjoy the divine acts you know the the more light and the more love is in heaven the better the beatific vision so that creates a different or that that gives a little different understanding to, to essential glory to what i understood i thought essential glory was in other words there's a certain point that in other no, words no, no. So we, what what they get what they get when they arrive in heaven is essential glory this is accidental glory right right so that a, it does not increase their essential glory accidental glory does not increase their essential glory then it says then we say in the, reading the other chapter it gives them more joys and yeah. divines and this yeah but let, let's continue reading this because uh, it's going to be uh we're past our time here i don't know if they're going to kick us out anytime soon. it says it's transformed everything that she's done into divine it seals on it the sanctity of its works mm -hmm. and gives her the new merit and glory as if she had done everything anew for love of it. Everything anew. Things will be new. Now, they'll be divine acts. If she loves, it's go back to life all the time she has loved and makes of them one single love. If she suffers, it calls to life all the time she has suffered, unites them together places on them the seal of divine pains and gives her the new merit for as many times as she has loved and suffered. In sum, everything that she has done and that she repeats, it all returns in act by uniting together in order to receive the new beauty, sanctity, grace, freshness, love, and new merit. In my will, there are no separated or divided acts, but highest unity. Everything must resemble me with this difference alone. That in the creature, there is our creating and growing act, while our supreme being is not subject to either growing or decrease. Okay, this is saying that we have, there is something called creating and growing. We can grow in sanctity. We can grow in divine virtue. Once we die, this is done. We stop having that act, right? Our fullness, immensity, and infinity is such that in the order to give vent to our love, we feel the need to give, to love the creatures, and to be loved, but without decreasing a tiny bit. This is why we are all eyes. We are as though on the lookout to see when she wants to live in our will. Is she doing an act yet? Is she doing an act? So she can come and invest it, right? So as to have the occasion to love her more and enrich her with her love to receive love. This is this is the uh, the, the method that was... What happens when you call it divine will? This is the architecture of the machine, right? We can say that we cover her with our divine being. We harmonize her with us in order to enjoy her and give her from her own. And which she stirred by the fever of our love and by our burning breath that tells her constantly, I love you, I love you, oh daughter. When she makes our echo her own and repeats to us, I love you, I love you, father. Life of my life, love of my love, my father, my creator, my all. I love you. She puts us in feast. Imagine that. She puts the Holy Trinity in feast and gives the Holy Trinity the pure joys that we want for having given her life. So as we do divine acts, you know, the Holy Trinity, our Heavenly Father, is receiving all this from us, putting them in feast. This is why we want her in our will, to keep her as we want, to give her what we want to give to her and to receive what he wants from her. So who do you think gets more pleasure out of the divine acts? Us or God, our Father in heaven? He gets everything. That's why he's waiting for us to do something so he can get something back. This is why we want to keep her as we want. Outside of our fiat, our love remains hampered for her. There's such a distance between she and us that she ends up feeling far away from us and we far away from her. 
and she reaches the point of fearing us and of being afraid of us, human will, where does it cast my creature whom I so much love? Look, Adam was afraid of his mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's just something else. And that, my friends, is the end of the story. Okay. Or the beginning. It's the beginning of the whole year. We get one year before we get chopped. <laughs> chop, chop. It's called the chop, chop block. All right, let's see here. Um, Ave Maria. Gracias plena. Gracias plena. Dominus tecum. Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu en mulieros. Benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, no et in hora mortis nostra. Ave Maria, grazie a te. Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieros. Benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, no et in hora mortis nostra. Amen. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus te, benedicta tui mulieribus, benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, noc et in hora mortis nostra. Amen. In the divine will, always. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, guys. It's nice seeing you all. God bless thank you, Felipe. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, heaven. Thank you, saints. Thank you, Luisa. Yeah.